Hi, Kyle, Anger Archaeology here to talk to you today about expressions of identity in colonial Andes, specifically uh, an Unku or a colonial era Inca tunic with the Tokopu and a checkerboard design. Um, so here's an introduction to the tunic. It is currently held in the Cleveland Museum of Art in the Norweb collection. Uh, it is called a half tunic. Uh, there is a size dimension. So the flowers, the Tokopu is the center uh, waistband design in the, in the rectangle there with the small. And the heraldic animals we're going to be looking at today, but how that deals with expressions of identity in um, South America in the colonial period. With a big thank you to a Mark Cole of the Cleveland Museum, uh, who sent me a um, detailed um, uh, image, a digital image of the um, colonial era Unku tunic. And so we're going to be looking at um, material culture can be understood as a structure set of differences by Ian Hodder. We're going to be applying that kind of temporally uh, and look at comparisons across time to understand uh, the differing social relations. So four main things we're going to be looking at is cultural context. We're going to examine the tunic's properties and we're going to see how textiles were used before the conquest of uh, the Andes and we're going to be looking at Inca textiles in their colonial context. So we're going to go through these uh, one to four, starting with the colonial context, and hopefully we can get at um, evidence um, for the different um, changing social relations. And so when we look at the material tunics, not just an object, it's actually uh, something that displays a lot of information. So first thing here is cultural context of the Inca. So before 1532, before the Viceroyalty of Peru, we can see that the Inca Empire, a couple hundred years before, solidified in uh, South America. So here's a map. Uh, the, the Inca Empire connected by a series of roads with three major areas, Cusco in green, uh, the capital, Lake Titicaca, a sacred place, and Potosi was the silver mountain, basically, that the Spanish came and, and colonized the area. And... Um, Basically, they enslaved the indigenous people, um, and many, many, many people suffered greatly, uh, as well as many uh, died uh, from disease. Um, so 10 million people uh, reduced to about a million uh, after colonization, but 5,500 kilometers of road, and the state language of the Inca was known as Quechua. So the Inca were only one polity uh, among a very diverse uh, region. To give you an idea of this, going to use Age of Empires, uh, they just give you a sense of um, the regionality of it. So you have one area here with, where alpacas or camelids were um, carefully regulated. You have another blue community near the coast. The coast is where cotton was grown. But alpacas and other camelids were grown in the interior mountain areas. The road network connected these people. There were storehouses uh, um, uh, that were manned by the Inca. So the, ex un the Unku tunic and its properties, we can see... Uh, that we're going to be looking at, it has a. It was known as cumbi, so that's a compound textile. Uh, so it was sumptuary laws were very strict in the Inca Empire. Uh, these tunics were non-fungible. They were expressions of identity and status given by a, given by the emperor to retainers, and they conveyed uh, their status and found in grave goods a lot. They could not be traded or exchanged. They had to die with the individual. Here's a, a picture of an alpaca. Their wool is very soft compared to cotton. Uh, so the two were used together, uh, created on a loom. Here's a, a picture of uh, an Inca woman from the 1930s using uh, traditional techniques to create Inca textiles. Here's colonial era depictions of uh, both an Inca woman and then also looks like uh, tonsured hair, so like Jesuits. Uh, here's a warp and, warp and wealth technique uh, visualized, so the cotton would be the um, vertical and the wool would be horizontal. Um, so the sequestered production uh, took a long time to produce these. The dyes were made of insects, took a lot of, of time to create these. Uh, and women created them, but as well as men, it's sort of um, unclear on that. Uh, but here's an image of an, uh, an Inca male wearing a traditional tunic. They came in various uh, de uh, depictions which conveyed a hierarchy of status and hierarchy of relationships. Uh, here's a general image of a tokopu. Uh, designs. We can see this is the Dumbarton Oaks, the, the Kopu tunic, uh, one of the, the last, uh, well, the only uh, pre-colonial tunic worn by the emperor is worn by royalty exclusively. 
So these takopu, they had a polysemic meaning, so they had multiple meanings. Uh, they conveyed regional identities, but also power, dominion, and a hierarchical structure. So uh, the um, uh, he's Dunbar and Oaks, we can see that there's a repeated uh, checkerboard pattern that's going to be uh, important. But the Dunbar and Oaks tunic is an all takopu tunic, so all of it was covered in these. So the more of those there are, the higher the status in general when we, when we look at textiles from the Incas, Inca period. Now we can see the uh, the, the checkerboard with the red triangle uh, Tokopu there is very meaningful because it probably conveys uh, the Tambo people who were recorded in the state religion of the Inca, which only existed for a couple hundred years before the Spanish came. Apparently the Tambo people agreed to become the state warriors of the Inca elites. Now, the Tambo people may have been um, spotted by Spanish authorities. We'll see in a little bit. But you can notice that on, on the colonial uh, tunics that the, the, com, the Tambo Tacopu is missing. Uh, so here's another image of, of uh, Inca uh, warriors, possibly. So Inca warrior with European uh, designs. But headdresses were also very sacred. Uh, you know, shawls were also worn uh, by men and women. Is a... And so the colonial Tokopus don't display any form of politically military identification, but the 1532 account says that the, the Imperial Guard wore a checkerboard livery. So the use of textiles pre-conquest, we've talked about that a bit, but we will expand that a bit now. Men and women both wore these into battle, um, and they were found in tomb offerings. And so marriage ceremonies was the way the Inca elites established kingship um, acceptance into the... Um, uh, Inca Empire and textiles represented that. Uh, so the Inca textiles in colonial period, um, we can see that the Spanish preserved the Inca textile tributary system. Uh, they created the uh, Mita, later the Incomida um, uh, labor corvée tax system, and the Spanish distributed textiles to the retainers. So, but the, and the Spanish didn't directly um, influence style, but that's a little unclear. It uh, looks like it was an organic process. So here you can pause this and read of uh, uh, an Inca textile um, tributary request. The Spanish were primarily concerned with silver at Potosi uh, architecture and ceremonies. They wanted the architecture to reflect Europeanism. And so here's a picture of a siren from Greek mythology depicted on an Inca temple, which relates to you know, the 18th century. Uh, also, uh, the Solstice fest Festival was, uh, the Spanish authorities tried to make that into a version of their Christmas. Uh, so here's again the, the, the Unku tunic in question. We can see the absence of the Tambu, the Kopus there. And so in 1575, there was the prohibition on the everyday wearing of Inca style garments, but they were permitted at Christian festivals. So we can see that Spanish authorities chose male Inca representatives to carry San Santiago in procession. And so stylistic changes uh, as well convey a, a, a mass production of uh, the copus to meet the Spanish um, request for taxation from these diverse communities. So they, they had, their meaning changed to a, a willingness to engage with the Spanish uh, would be the one interpretation. Here's a Dunbar and Oaks comparing it with the... Um, the Unku tunic, a colonial era, we can see that the noble selection by the Spanish uh, potentially instituted a European model of a nuclear family into the Andes, which was alien to them. But men were increasingly the only rep recognized representative of the household, which is a change from earlier periods where men and women had more of an egalitarian uh, relation with um, society in general. Now, the flower design is interesting. It's a mark of indigenous identity, potentially. It is the current, um, this is a cantua the national flower of Peru. Now, it can also be uh, put on the textiles to mark its quality, to differentiate this textile from other textiles because the, um, the Andes were entering into the globalized market. And the heraldic animals uh, near the V-neck uh, was most certainly introduced um, via um, heraldic notions held by the Spanish also. But the jaguar was sacred to the Inca, but its depiction is a very European in this context. And one problem with modern identity is that the Spanish and Inca had a preferential uh, relationship, which today uh, leads us to promote a pan-Incan identity, which is fundamentally ahistorical and fails to recognize the diverse uh, identities in the Andes, like the Tombo people, for instance. 
anyway, those were my thoughts. Um, thank you for uh, reading a short introduction, watching a short introduction. Here's some of my uh, the bi little bibliography. Uh, thank you so much, Kyle and Archaeology. Take care. Thank <laughs> you.